Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're doing a champion guide today on Sethalia. Sethalia, uh, one of the, like, the most underrated legendary champions in the game. She always scores high on my tier list because she can come and play anywhere. Um, so let me just talk you through what she can do, how I've geared her up so far, um, and, and then let's get into some different content. So she can be... The arena champion she can be the dungeon carry she can be uh even she's got some viability on clan boss albeit that's not a best spot um i mean she was poor she had to get someone to stitch two different bits of clothing together to give her an outfit i love this kind of weird stitch down to her her uh groin area anyway um and i mean i don't know what's going on there is that a a nose ring or is it just a, a beauty mark i don't know she's she's funky looking we don't mind um so let's go into what she does a1 she's got an hp burn uh so it's single t uh, single hitter 50 percent chance of placing the burn it's an okay a1 nothing more than that it gives her because of this she gets some clan boss viability that's kind of it really this gives her some way of doing some damage on clan boss while she does the rest of her kit so she's got a two turn cooldown on a remove all debuffs from a target ally and place a block debuff for two turns on that champion. Um, also heals that ally by 75% of their max HP. That's a huge ability, like tons of stuff going on with that. Um, heals all other allies as well by 20% of their HP and fills their turn meter by 15% if the target is fully healed by this skill. So you can almost guarantee a full heal, almost. So you get a 15% turn meter boost, you get a heal for everyone, and you get block debuffs on the champion that's taking all the pain. Uh, so this is awesome for Spider. So Spider, you literally cleanse off 10 poisons if you've got 10 poisons on you. You heal that champion kind of up to full, boost everyone else's turn meter up. Uh, it's also cool for really any dungeon where you're taking debuffs. So it's a heal mechanic, it's a debuff stripper or remover, um, and a turn meter booster as well. Tons going on there. And it throws block debuffs up in its place. So that person then that's taken all of the spiderling pain is going to have a block debuffs in its place. Really cool ability. Uh, we've then got, an, and on two turns, like pretty much you hardly ever A1 because you're going two turn, three turn, back to two turn, uh, A1, back to three turn, back to two. Like you're, you're kind of always using your A2, A3. If you don't book her out, she actually falls in line perfectly to remove the stun if you're going turn for turn with the clan boss so if you actually don't put the book into this and get the cooldown it's potentially better for a clan boss healer if that's what you want her for she's then got an a3 which you can book down to three turns 100 percent chance i would suggest booking this ability like get your 100 percent here 100 percent chance of removing all buffs from all enemies that's massive so basically you're cleansing all of those buffs off. You're against the Duchess team, you're against the Seafy team. They've all gone. If you're in uh, Faction Wars and you're trying to get through some of the waves where they buff tons, clean all of those buffs off. If you remove five or more buffs, you drop their turn meter by 20% and you push yours up by 20%. All of that is huge. You just need to make sure you've got accuracy to do the turn meter stuff and the remove buffs. This needs accuracy. Um, and this would need accuracy here as well. She's got a resistance aura as well for magic champions. That's a terrible aura for a legendary champion. I don't really get it. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. The rest of her kit is amazing. This aura is weird. Um, but yeah, cool champion. So I've currently got a build for an arena setup to go second after my Arbiter. Uh, my Arbiter is 326 speed, so I needed to get to 240 odd speed to do that. So we're going to show in the arena first. This same build pretty much works anywhere actually maybe with the exception of clan boss because our masteries i've got as an accuracy mastery so we've kind of gone heavily into the accuracy tree to get the arena working well um i could easily come out of that and, and change that for war master and then she would be fine to go for anywhere else in the game same build um so same build if i push push war master down the bottom left so yeah let's get her into some some action and you can see how she's going just in terms of, uh, I didn't say it actually, let me just show you something quick. In terms of her kit, 
There's no damage from this. There's no damage from this. And you're going to be doing that the majority of the time. So building up a damage is literally pointless. A damage is based on attack. Don't worry about attack. You want to build a defense up high. Look how high her base defense is. 1350. That's huge. Really high uh, base HP as well. Very easy to keep alive. Like push her HP and, and defense up. She's really tanky. And because she's so tanky, you can make her fast. She's got brilliant base stats. Really good base stats. 108 speed, 1354 defense, 18,000 HP. Huge, huge base stats. So you want to make the most of those. You know, speed sets on her, perception sets on her. Um, even defensive gear on her would be really good. I've actually gone defense percentage on the gloves, defense on the chest as well, and then speed on the boots for this build. So let's show her off. Let's get her in some arena fights first. Um, start here. I don't really want to fight double Rotus. So this is a team I can run here. Arbiter into Th Thethalia. And then because she's going to buff strip, it doesn't matter if they've got immunity gear on, doesn't matter if there's a Crisk in the team, she'll get through all of that and it will just set up your damage. Not only is she buff stripping, she's also boosting your speed. So I just need to make sure that I've got somebody in here that's that's kind of quick enough. Maybe we'd do Madame. This is kind of a team comp that I would normally run. Make sure I've got the right one. Fastest one, not that one. That one. So Madame, I'm literally just using for drop defense. It actually doesn't need to be Madame because I've I would have already got rid of their um any sort of buffs they've got. So you go in, you remove the buffs and turn meter and grow our turn meter all at the same time. Which is a huge ability. Um I think I just pushed my Foley on ahead of my Madame somehow. And then basically you get your damage off straight after that. So it's a huge, huge ability, um, which is kind of like a game changer for anyone who's running her in the arena. I think this is actually a best spot. She comes in and she does a ton of work for you, um, especially if you're up against teams that do a lot of buffs. She's, For me, she's best in a defensive comp where you just want somebody that's going to stay alive uh, you know, you run her with other defensive-based champions. She'll keep your team alive, and she'll do a ton of a uh, ton of work for you. So I could bring in someone like Lydia. What's her speed at, at the moment? It's fast. Okay, drop defense. We can remove any buffs, drop their turn meter, and then the slam comes in. So that's that's like the type of comp that you would run with a Sathalia. And then if you're in trouble, if you've got one person in serious trouble, Sathalia will then come in and throw the heals on and help your team out that way. So she is brilliant for the arena. Brilliant, brilliant champion for the arena. Um, as I say, you can run the same type of build in dungeon content as well. So for me, her best dungeon is going to be Spider. Um, so we can run a spider comp where we can do someone like, so she's going to do turn meter control. She's going to do healing. So we want these two for a bit more turn meter control here. Um, speed here. She comes in as your healer. Let's bring in, I don't know, a couple of unlikely heroes just to kind of show how effective this can be. So we could bring in. A Zephyr as our tank, and then an Armaga as another turn meter control champion. So we've got a bunch of turn meter control. Zephyr Sniper is quite high resistance, tanky, not too slow in life, still gear. And then everyone else really is just doing turn meter stuff. So I don't have any real way of damaging the spider here. I don't have any kind of big shields or anything going on. But you'll see how effective Sathalia is in this role. Drops turn meter there on everyone. We then get a speed decrease coming on from our Silar. She's going to get the HP burnout. If you've got someone like Vizier as well, you could actually run her with Vizier. She HP burns. Vizier spreads that burn. And that's crazy, crazy kind of tactic. But you can see we've got someone tanking it up. Nice. So Thalia just dropping turn meter. Keeping it real. Keeping us, keeping us level. And then we've got tons of turn meter control going on. And this will not be a quick run. 
But I know a lot of people say, you know, how do you beat the spider if you don't have miscreated monster or, you know, those sort of guys. See that? We just got the heal off there plus the block debuffs. She's one of the ways that you can do that. So block debuffs going on. She's got high resistance anyway, so she's probably not going to take a debuff. But just in case, we're going to um, cleanse that off. But it just enables you to keep your tank alive for a lot longer. Um, especially if you don't manage to get yourself a high resistance tank. And they are taking those poisons. We are taking quite big hits still, even though we've got high defense. We see that? Another big heal. And this will be a really long run because I've got no real damage here at all. In fact, I've got no damage here at all. Um, it's just a slow and steady turn meter control team. Um, so I'm going to flick this through to the end and then we'll get on to the next piece. So we're coming in 13 minutes. I've literally. I pressed auto the whole way. All we've been doing is turn me to control, turn me to control. Nobody had any damage in this team, as you can see, because it took us 13 minutes. But sometimes you've just got to get a team that can win. And a lot of the people that watch the videos are like, I don't have a team that can win. You know, I don't have a team that can do it. Turn me to control is as good as damage if you cannot deal with the spiderlings. So. Get yourself a tank, get yourself a ton, a ton of turn meter control and you might have a chance. Uh, but Sathalia is awesome in that role of support, turn meter control, heal, brilliant, brilliant champion for that role. Um, we're going to take her in now, perhaps speed, speed up the pace a little bit um, and run her in a team that does damage. So perhaps we just put her into, this team's a bit too crazy good. So let's just spice it down a touch. Uh, we can actually run High Cartoon still. Or Apothecary. Maybe you guys would have built Apothecary instead. Both are awesome here. So we could do this, this. She will cleanse off things like the spy, uh, the Dragon's stuns and stuff like that if she's protected. He's a cleanser as well, so I don't need him doing the same job. Uh, we could bring in a War Maiden for drop defense. We could bring in a Poisoner in Frozen Banshee. And then maybe we just bring in some some form of damage. Maybe a okay. cow. So in this job, uh, in this role, she's sorting out turn meter for us like this. So giving us more time to go. We're getting our decreased defense off. Um, she's then going to just heal up anyone who's taking that, that real pain. So she does A1. She hits pretty hard, actually. 20k A1 is not a soft hit. The, the thing with it is... She, it's, it's her only move that does any damage, so the chances of you building to do that hit is pretty much zero because what's the point? It, you know, you're not going to go and A1 everyone to death. Um, but she's actually quite a hard hitter. I'm not sure, looking at how easy my KO went down there, I'm not sure if he's actually built. But you can see, we'll just get ourselves through the waves. Again, it's not going to be a quick team. I've put in deliberately a bunch of um, rares here so that. You can see what she actually does. That's going to be wave one. I'll get us through to the actual boss so you can see what happens on the boss part of the fight. Actually, something just happened which I forgot to tell you about. But um, basically, Apothecary had put increased speed on the whole team. Part of Sathalia's kit where she's also dropping their turn meter, she's ripping that speed buff off. So, you know, for these waves where they're buffing themselves and getting themselves going, she actually comes in and does quite a lot of work to stop that in its tracks. So it's not just turn meter control, she's also ripping off buffs. You think about that in Faction Wars where you're constantly up against tons of waves with buffs on, and actually she's doing a load of work. I'm about to just run this through. So if, if we had KO in here, we'd, we'd have cleared the waves quicker. I didn't have him built defensive enough. So on the boss then, we're boosting turn meter. We're going to rely mainly on Frozen Banshee Poison, but HP Burn actually does do quite a lot of work here as well. And then in terms of the, the section here where we could be in trouble, obviously the stun will come out. She's already put a block uh, debuffs on our Apothecary, so he cannot be stunned even though the stun's not going to land because we've done enough damage. Um, and when we've got all of these um, debuffs on us here, she's just going to cleanse them off of one and then heal everyone else. So pretty pretty good. It's not as kind of awesome as some of the other 
debuff cleansers for your team because other people can cleanse the whole team. But with everything else that she's doing, it is actually really like carry strong for Dragonfight. So I think she's very, very high tier for Dragon, very like top tier for Spider in terms of support play. Um, when it comes to the other dungeons, Ice Golem and um, Finites, well, she doesn't have any multi hits here. So Finites is probably her worst spot. Um, she can help you get through the waves in terms of just cleansing and healing and that type of thing. But for actual Finite boss, she's not that strong. For Ice Golem, she can cleanse off things like the freezes from one person on your team. Again, she'll do the turn meter drop from the enemy, but they don't self buff or anything like that on the boss. So she's strong. She's strong as a support player, but she won't be kind of doing anything out of the ordinary there. So we're not on the right day for Faction Wars, but Faction Wars is she's like an MVP for this faction in terms of removing all of those buffs, cleansing, putting block debuffs out so that the bosses can't lay their fears and stuns and that type of thing on you, healing. Um, so anyone that does a, a bunch of healing and cleansing and buff ripping is really valuable for Faction Wars. So definitely don't discount her for that. Um, and then for something like Clan Boss, so we can just run, I'll try and run like a, a fairly normal style team, albeit it's going to be strong because the champs I've got built are strong for Clan Boss, but you can kind of see what she can bring in a Clan Boss setup as well. Who else have I got geared for Clan Boss Lydia? So in, it's a, in fact an insanely strong team, but you'll see the role that she can play here. Uh, what am I missing? Some poison. Let's just go with frozen. Kind of weird build for her, but we'll try it. Um, so yeah, so if, if I didn't book her out and I was just literally going on a one for one, she would be the person who would be able to cleanse the stun every time it goes off. But what I'm going to hopefully show here is just an example of it happening randomly because I don't have the speed tune for this clan boss at all. Um, the other thing she's going to do here for us is she's actually going to be boosting turn meter regularly. So... She's not going to drop any turn meter from the boss. She will rip off his increase attack buff if you if you build her right. So you can get that to work. But she won't be able to like control his turn meter in any way. You're not able to. But you can see already she's just going to be the person who keeps us alive, keeps debuffs away from us. Uh, she's actually always taking the stun, typically. But... Um, if she wasn't taking the stun, she'd be cleansing it off as someone else. I, I just haven't gotten did. I haven't got her did for clan bosses to trouble. So I'm going to let this run through. It's a bad example because I've not set her up exactly for this. And I haven't even put um, Warmaster on her. So her damage is going to be low. But just be rest assured, the build I've got in terms of defense and health is actually really strong. And she's really easy to build for clan boss. And her main damage will come from her HP burn and war master hits from array one but the value she brings is healing and um basically it's it's healing and it's going to be cleansing that stun off if you get a speed tuned in the right way so i'm gonna let this run in i'll show you the damage at the end um and then we'll wrap it up oh, okay so actually he has been stunned he's done a go first don't matter don't matter <laughs> so the funny thing with this comp is i'm, I'm not running any healing so my Valk shield is huge um, but you can see here that my health does drop and you have to heal your way back to full to carry runs on as long as this. I'm on turn 35 now. This this boss hits hard at this point, right? This boss is absolutely smacking by turn 35. So look how much healing she just did, which is huge. Um, I'm going to end the run here. So I've done the damage I needed to do, but she is pretty damn solid as a healer for your clan boss run as well. So here we go. I mean, I just I ended the run myself, but I wanted to give you a sense of the damage without any War Master props going on. Three million. So she's she's not a high damage dealer, and she won't be because most of her moves don't do damage. Most of her abilities are non-damage dealing. Um, but if you're a like a I don't know mid-game account and you've got Sathalia, she's probably in your clan boss team for sure. 
Um, but yeah, for me, Sathalia, awesome arena champion, awesome spider and dragon champion, top tier for faction wars, and she can basically play anywhere else in the game. Hope you enjoyed the guide, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.